Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Tamlin and this is Sewn on the Tine. I'm here today with my January makes and favourites video. I think I missed a month. I think December there was no makes and favourites. If you know or if you've watched my previous videos, I wasn't making anything in December due to being really poorly during my first trimester. So I just didn't get a video filmed because I wasn't feeling up to it. But I am back with January's video. I've made five things in January, which is pretty good going. I'm quite happy with that. And I've got a few favorite things to talk you through. I am wearing today a make that I just finished today. It's the Megan Nielsen Jarrah sweater made in this incredible soft sweater fabric. <laughs> yeah, it's a just a, a jersey, a sweatshirt jersey from Guthrie and Garney. It's lilac and it's just the softest thing. I've made the Jarrah sweater a few times now. One of them is actually in my January mix that I'll talk about soon. And I've made them the same size. And this one's just come out so slouchy and oversized, but I'm actually really happy with that. It's obviously just the different fabric type, but I really like the oversized fit and there's plenty of space in it for my bump that's going to be growing quite significantly soon. So yeah, I'm very happy with this. I love the drop shoulders and it's just snuggly and warm and cozy and lovely. So the first thing I actually managed to make in January was something I'd had cut out for a while and it's the Tilly and the Buttons indigo dress. I made it in this beautiful tensile lawn fabric from Lamazi Fabrics. It's a Lady McElroy fabric. I made the dress version with the flounce sleeves with the normal gathered waist and the normal gathered sleeve, not the exposed ruffle. I used a narrow rolled hem at the bottom of the skirt part and also the sleeves. That didn't go perfectly, I have to admit, and I'm considering possibly unpicking the hem and redoing it around the skirt because there's a couple of places that I'm not too happy with it, but from a distance it looks really really good. <laughs> Now I made the size 4, just the straight size 4, which I usually make in Tilly patterns and with the indigo it is an oversized fit, but now I have started to grow in certain areas during my pregnancy, I am going to size up to a size 5 on my next attempt and I will be making another one soon. Actually I saw something really interesting on Instagram the other day, Sarah from Crafty So and So posted a hack that she was doing of the of the indigo dress but she was doing a button down front so that she could breastfeed her baby so I would be really interested in doing that she's going to write a blog post about it she did message me and tell me how to do it but she's going to do a blog post if she's done that by the time this video goes up I will link it below if not I'll just link to her Instagram page and I think that's a really good idea because I do need to start to think about that from now on, really making things that are going to be nursing friendly because otherwise I may not be able to wear them for at least six months after the baby's born. So it will make sense to make things that are suitable for nursing. The next garment I made in January was for a Lamazi blog post and it's the Megan Nielsen Jarrah sweater made in Mind the Maker quilted chevron fabric. So Lamazi provided me with that fabric so that I could do a video and a blog post for them. I really really love this fabric, it's so gorgeous and I love the chevron detail on it. The quality of it is incredible. I loved working with it and producing this gorgeous jumper, I'm really happy with it and the colour is one of my absolute favourite colours. I'm not going to go into any more detail about that make because all the details are over on the Lamazi blog, I will link to it down below. There is a video coming up next week as well where I'll talk in more detail about how to sew with double knit fabrics, of which this is one of them. Now the third garment I made was not actually for me and it was a work in progress I had been working on for quite a while and it was my dad's Christmas present. I didn't actually see my mum and dad over Christmas. We go down to Oxfordshire to spend Christmas with Sam's family. That's just the way it sort of works out. But I do then have a celebration with my mum and dad a little bit later. And we went for a lovely meal with them in January to celebrate our Christmas. And I was able to give my dad his Christmas present then. I made him the 
Bjorn jumper from La Maison Victor magazine. I really loved the look of this jumper when I first saw it and it was the reason I bought the magazine to be honest. I wanted to make one for Sam, I wanted to make one for me and I thought my dad would love it as well. The fabric I used to make this jumper were from First for Fabrics. I used a lovely dark green sweatshirt fabric, so a fleece back sweatshirt in. And then for the black detail, I used a black ribbon. Now this was a little bit of an error where the collar is concerned because it wasn't stable enough for the collar. I should have used sweatshirt and fabric again for the collar rather than using ribbon, but it worked really well for the cuffs and the hemband. The jumper itself was actually quite straightforward to make. The instructions are pretty good in La Maison Victor and there are a lot of diagrams within the step-by-step -step instructions. I didn't find the process of actually sewing the garment a trouble at all, but the collar was a little bit of a challenge in terms of getting it to sit right but I felt like I'd gone too far with it and I wasn't able to change the fabric that I used before I realised it was too late if that makes sense because I'd inserted the zip and once I'd inserted the zip I just felt like there was no going back so I am really happy with the garment and my dad loved it just I am disappointed with the collar so I'm going to make him another one at some point and make sure that I use a more sturdy fabric for that collar. Make number four of January was for me again and it was for a blog post for Lubido Fabrics. So I'm on their blogger team and as part of that they let me choose some fabric from their website and then make a garment and write a blog post for them. I opted for this gorgeous mustard coloured needle cord and I had initially planned to make the Jenny overalls from Closet Case but then obviously finding out I was pregnant, I needed to change my mind a little bit because they would not have been suitable for my pregnancy body. I decided to go with the Yanta overalls by Helen's Closet and they worked wonderfully. I love the baggy, oversized style of them. They remind me very much of the Lucy and Yak dungarees, if you've heard of those. They are a pair of ready to wear dungarees or a style of ready to wear dungarees that you can buy and I absolutely love them so I did make some changes to my garment to make them a little bit more Lucy and Yak style. Again I won't go into any more details here, I'll link to the blog post down below and you can go and read all about them. And the last garment I made in January was not for me, it was for a friend's little baby, it was actually a belated Christmas present, I made the Poppy and Jazz dandelion dungarees which I've made a few times now for friend's children this pair are reversible, they have a gorgeous dinosaur print jersey on one side and a yellow jersey on the other side and I absolutely love them. I feel like I'm hoping I've got enough fabric left to make some for my own baby <laughs> because I really really love a dinosaur print fabric. Love making these dungarees, they're such a great gift for you to give to somebody's little one. So that is everything I managed to sew in January. Moving on now to some of my favourite things. I'm going to start off with some TV shows. I actually watched quite a lot of TV in January, more than I would have usually, and that's because I was still quite lethargic, lacking in energy, tired from my pregnancy, so I did spend quite a lot of time watching TV. So I've got three favourites to talk to you about. The first one is Project Runway. Now this has been around for a long time. It's an American show where designers compete against each other. There are themes each week that the designers have to meet. So they get told the theme, they then go away and design a garment, an outfit, it's usually a whole outfit, that they would then purchase a fabric for, sew up and style and send down the runway for judging and I just absolutely love this show. It's not really readily available in the UK to watch, but I discovered a subscription channel called Hey You quite recently. So for a small charge each month, you can subscribe to Hey You and you can get access to loads of reality TV shows, Project Runway being one of them. So I think I pay 3 99 a month. That price is because I also pay for Amazon Prime and they're linked so if you're an Amazon Prime member you get Hey You for a cheaper price, I believe. All of season 17 of Project Runway was available to watch so I think I binge watched that in the space of a few days and now I'm watching season 18 and a new episode is released every Friday so I just get so excited for Fridays knowing that I can watch the new episode of Project Runway. So yeah, absolutely love that show. On a similar note, 
There's a new show that came out recently on Netflix called Next in Fashion, a very, very similar concept to Project Runway, hosted by Alexa Chung and Tan France. And yeah, it's pretty much the same concept. The designers have a theme each week that they need to design a look for, so an outfit. Some weeks actually it was two outfits, but the difference in Next in Fashion is for the first few weeks of the competition, the designers were working in pairs. So it was a team effort and they usually had two looks to create. Then further down the line towards the end of the competition, it went down to individuals. So yeah, I binge watched the whole of that in the space of three days because it's all available on Netflix straight away. So you didn't have to wait each week for a new episode. So I would highly recommend that as well. It's very inspiring. And I was very happy with the person that won at the end. No spoilers here. My last TV show I'll talk to you about is slightly different and it's a drama that again is on Netflix. It's called The Stranger. I binge watched this in a couple of days while Sam was away. Really, really interesting. It's based on a book by Harbin. Ah, Harbin. Harbin. Harlan Coben. So The Stranger is based on a book by Harlan Coben and it's just a really really interesting it completely hooks you in drama series like a thriller type thing but I absolutely loved it and was hooked and had to watch the next one and the next one and the next one until I'd finished the whole series so I would highly recommend that one and apparently they are going to be doing more of the Harlan Coben books for TV, so that is really good news. Right, so moving on, my favourite Instagram of the month or of recent weeks is one that I actually mentioned in my favourite pattern releases video that was up recently, and it's Charlene from So So Dressmaking. I absolutely love her Instagram, I find it incredibly inspiring. She does lots of stories where she talks about what she's cutting out or what she's sewing next or what changes she's going to make to her garments and I just really love her style so I would highly recommend going and checking out her Instagram. Loads of inspiration on there. My favourite YouTube channel of the month, I was trying to figure out who it was because I just, I've watched quite a lot of YouTubers this month but I did pick out one that I've really enjoyed watching and that is Lizzie B. I really love her channel, she's had a channel for quite a while now but she's done a few videos in January. I've really loved all of them. I love her style, the way she talks is very relaxing. I love the things that she makes. She's got a very specific taste and style, I would say, and I really like it. I love that she sews in quite a small space and she did a video about that and I loved seeing that and the way that she manages to sew in her small, smaller environment that she has available for that. I also like that she does quite a few alterations or changes to garments that maybe she's not getting so much wear out of. So that's quite inspiring to me that she goes back to some me maids that aren't getting as much love or attention as they deserve and she changes them up a bit to make them more wearable for her current style. So yeah, I'd recommend going and checking out Lizzie B if you don't watch her already. I'm going to talk about my favourite food of the month, but it's a bit general. So during the first few months of my pregnancy, I was struggling to manage to eat healthy food. So I was struggling to get a healthy diet in because of the lack of energy and just the complete exhaustion. It was just sort of grabbing whatever was easy. So quite a lot of carbs like toast and cereal just because they were so easy. But I was becoming quite aware that I need to nourish my body so it's nice and strong for the next few months, but also provide those nutrients to my baby. So I wanted to try and get some healthier food in. And I just happened to see on Instagram an advert for a food delivery service called Gusto. So that is where they deliver a box of ingredients and meal recipe cards for you to then make those specific recipes that following week. And you can get your box as often as you like, sort of anywhere from weekly to fortnightly to monthly, or you can just get a one-off box. I got a discount code from this advert that I saw. So I got my first box for 50% off. So it was £17.50 instead of 35. And that got me four 
different recipes, each one serving two people. So that was quite a lot of food that was going to really help me get nice healthy choices in that week. Now Sam wasn't eating those meals as well, so that was all for me. So I did manage to split my meals into portions and then have my leftovers the next day, which was really good. I've really, really enjoyed getting these Gusto boxes every week. You go onto the app or the website the week before or a couple of weeks before and you choose your four meal options from a list of 50 and they're split into different categories. So it might be healthy, it might be vegan and vegetarian, gluten-free. It could be that you want quick meals that'll only take 10 minutes to prepare and cook. So I just tend to look at the whole list of them and just go through and choose a nice variety of things for the week ahead. Then I place my order, they deliver that, I get mine on a Sunday, and then I pop it all in the fridge, plan out what I'm going to have on specific days, and away I go. So it's really been useful for getting me cooking again, which I'd got out of the habit of, but also getting some really healthy food in. So I've been choosing meals which have lots of vegetables and nutrients in. I think I'm on my fourth week of boxes now, so you can tell that I am enjoying them. And in that time, so out of 16 meals, there's only one that I've had that I probably wouldn't order again. All of the others have been absolutely incredible. And the great thing is you can then keep your recipe card and you can make the recipe again in future. So if you want to get those ingredients and make it yourself in future, you can do that. So what I'll do down below in the description box is I'll put my referral code and link. If you would like to use that, you can get your first box for £14 instead of 35 which is amazing. Now you can just get that one box and then you can cancel it after that. You don't need to get any further boxes. You must remember to cancel it though because I think it would just roll on if you didn't cancel it. But you can get your first box for £14. Sorry, I think this is just in the UK, so sorry if you're watching from other countries. There might be this sort of service in your country as well, but this is just specifically for the UK. If you'd like to use my referral code to get yourself a Gusto box, then follow the link in the description box. And there's just one more thing I wanted to mention, and it's something that I treated myself to quite early in January. I was feeling quite down because of feeling so lethargic and lacking in energy and you know, struggling a little bit with that side of the pregnancy. So I wanted to treat myself to something and I've been following an account on Instagram for a while called The Book Taster. Now this has been set up by one woman and it's her idea and it's to send out book gift boxes, basically. So you can go on there and you can order a book tasting box to send to a friend, a family member, yourself, which I did. In that box, it has lots of lovely things to treat yourself with or to treat the other person with, to help them relax, to have whilst reading the book. So we'll put a photo in of the things that were in my box so you can get a better idea. I don't think I'm explaining it too well, but I really love the concept and receiving this through the post was just wonderful. Now it's really tailored and personalized to the person you're purchasing for. So on the website, you can choose from a few different options of the type of box that you want. You can get them for adults and children, even newborn babies, which is amazing. <laughs> and you talk a little bit about the person you are purchasing for, give an idea of the sorts of things they like or if they've been going through a bit of a hard time, just explaining that. Any information that would help the book taster to give a more personalised option in their box. So out of the options that you could choose, I opted for the chilling box because I really love a psychological thriller type of read and I was really, really happy with what I got. The chocolate was amazing. The tea was delicious. The soap was so lovely. I love the bookmark. I've been using it ever since. And my book was fantastic. Really, really fantastic. I love the way it was all packaged and just such attention to detail and really, really reasonably priced as well. My box delivered was £24, which I think is really fantastic value for what you get and what an absolute treat it was to receive. So I would highly recommend going and checking out The Book Taster. I'll link to her Instagram and also her website down below. She posts worldwide now, so wherever you are in the world, you can order a book tasting box for yourself, or like I say, it makes the most perfect gift. 
I actually would quite like to receive another one soon so I might be dropping some hints to my husband. Just one more thing I wanted to mention in this video. If you don't already follow me on Instagram, I know not everybody is on Instagram, but you might not know that I host monthly social sewing days at First for Fabrics in Newcastle or near Newcastle. And I just wanted to mention them on here because you might be watching my videos living quite close by in the local area and would love to come to one of those days but you don't actually know about them because you don't follow me on Instagram which is where I post the information. So I wanted to mention them here. The next two dates that I'm hosting are the 15th and the 16th of February. Now the Saturday the 15th is sold out but there are a couple of spaces left on Sunday the 16th of February. If you'd be interested in coming along then please just email me. My email address is in the description box down below. It's just sewn on the tine at gmail.com. All we do is get together, you bring along your own projects, your own sewing machine, or you might just want to trace out patterns or cut fabric. And we do that together in a lovely sewing space. We have some tea, we have some biscuits, we have lots of chat, we support each other, give each other ideas. And it's just a really lovely, environment to spend time in and to get to know other like-minded people. So I'll leave the details down below. If you can't make Sunday the 16th but you would like to be notified of future dates then just drop me an email and I can let you know when the next dates become available. So that is all for my January makes and favourites video. I hope you've enjoyed what I've shared with you today. I'm sorry if it was a little bit rambly and waffly at times. I feel out of practice because it's been a couple of weeks since my last video. So I've forgotten how to do the talking and stuff. <laughs> if you don't already subscribe, I would love you to. And also hit that notification bell if you'd like to be notified when my next video is up. I'm also doing really well on my Kofi page, but I do need a few more coffees so if you haven't already bought me one or you have but you would like to support me again I would really appreciate that. I'm getting close to the point where I could top up the rest of the money myself but I'm not there yet so I really would appreciate your help in getting me to my goal of being able to buy my own vlogging camera. That would really help me and help this channel and help me put out more content and better content for you. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you again very soon. Happy sewing. Bye. So I didn't find the pro... Uh, I can't talk today. So I decided to go with the Yanta overalls by Hell... Hopefully you can add that in, Sam. I don't know.